WBON. My name is Perry Small. This is the Midday Show. Um, there is going to be a Santa visit at a very special place. And as I was telling you about La Rabita Hospital and what a really unique and wonderful place it is for families who are dealing with children that have chronic illnesses, disabilities, and the likes. And I always, and I said earlier, it is a very special place because you're dealing with children and the people that work there are remarkable. And I told you from my own experience, when my brother was there for a very short time, nothing really huge, but it, we saw lots of children with lots of um, various, uh, um, you know, diseases and, and ailments that just would break your heart. Joining us on the live line, it is my great pleasure to bring to you Brenda Wolf, who is the president and CEO of Lara Bita Hospital, Children's Hospital. Hello, CEO President Wolf. How are you today? I'm fine, and thank you so much for having me on the air, and I hope everyone is gearing up for a wonderful holiday weekend. Do you do people tell you all the time, uh, President Wolf, how special Lara Bita is? Oh, yes, they do, and it is special, and they always usually say, how can you do it? And uh, to me, it's the fact that we are able to offer the very best for our kids and families, and, you know, they've got a lot of strikes against them, but we try to make sure that they have what they need, that they are going to be able to grow and develop and be the absolute best that they can be. So let me ask you, what what, what is the mission of Lara Bita, because do you just, is it just for um, the children and families with financial challenges? I mean, who is the patient that would go to Lara Bita? We serve any child who has a, a number of specialized conditions. They're usually medical conditions that aren't going to go away. Okay. So they may not be fatal, but they may be sickle cell disease. They may be cerebral palsy. Maybe that they've experienced trauma from a burn or a motor vehicle accident. Mm -hmm. It's an array of conditions. But what makes them sort of all common is the fact that that they and their families need a tremendous amount of support. Mm -hmm. And it's not just good medical care. It's also um, support, help with their education, um, social services. And it turns out that the vast, vast majority of our families are of low income. But that's a circumstance of where we're located and also because so many of our families have so many significant needs. So how does Lara Bita, I mean, do you have a lot of fundraisers? I mean, because right now we're being deluged with the St. Jude Hospital commercials. How do, how do you get funding to continue to do the work that you do? Well, first of all, the, uh, the vast majority of our patients and their families are insured through the Medicaid program. Okay. And we work very, very hard to ensure that um, we get paid for what we do, but we get no paid nowhere near what it costs us to do. So we also do fundraising. We don't have the resources to advertise on TV and have, uh, you know, spokespeople. So we do fundraising in much smaller ways. We do have a couple of special events each year, mm -hmm. and then we reach out to uh, people who help us, and we have a wonderful board who also helps to reach out to, you know, friends, and we get lots of get support from Chicago's foundations, but it really does take a village uh, to allow us to do what we do. How has the Illinois budget impasse, um, impacted the impacted Lara Bita Hospital? Well, these are challenging times, to say the least. Um, we've been somewhat fortunate in that there's been a court order in place since August of 2015 um, that has allowed a, the, a good majority of the dollars um, that we um, that we're owed or that for the services we have provided to be paid. So we're in a lot better shape than many other um, uh, organizations, but we see it all around us. Uh -huh. the other agencies that serve our families, and there's just also tremendous uncertainty about what's going to happen next. 
You've been around for 120 years. I, that is remarkable in itself. Um, that, any plans for, you know, you, because uniquely, I, I can't believe that La Arbita, that's basically um, parkland for the most part, or are you just surrounded by parkland, Chicago Park District land? Now, we, um, we are a, I use the word tenant loosely, but we, uh, we have a, an agreement with the Chicago Park District. Um, essentially, five acres there are part of the agreement we have with the Park District. So um, it's not our land, but we've, as you said, we've been there for 120 years, and we have a very good working relationship with the Park District, but we also try to be very respectful of the fact that we're in the park, and the park is not just for La Arbita and its families and our staff, it's for the community. I, I was saying before you came on the air, I used to go sit there at the Jackson Park Lagoon and meditate, so I, you know, I was very familiar with La Arbita, but it is just a, it really is a be- beautiful facility, and its surroundings are absolutely breathtaking. And the, he- the healing um, notion of being by the water really uh, speaks a lot to who we are and what we do. And for some of our kids and families, they don't get to the lakeshore that often, so it's also an experience for them to have that they might not ordinarily get. Yeah, they, I mean, if they can get up and go, they, do you often let them go out and have picnics with their families or if they want to get some fresh air? Well, certainly if our kids are... First of all, our inpatients, obviously, if they're well enough, and right. actually some of our uh, rehab therapists use the outdoors as part of therapy. But we also have a fairly substantial outpatient clinic program, so families come every single day and come to La Arbita for the services and then can take advantage of being in the, you know, in the area as well. All right, then. So Santa members of the Chicago Fire Department, Engine Company number 63, are going to um, visit with some of your patients. When does this happen? Well, this has been a tradition for over 40 years. Santa arrives on Christmas morning on a Chicago Fire Department truck and, and then is there to deliver toys for the kids who are unfortunately hospitalized over the holidays. And it's a great event, and we love having the firemen as well. The kids love visiting with them because they're heroes. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful morning at La Arbita. Oh, I just think this is so sweet. And listen, guys. Um, uh, the hospital welcomes high school, college students, working men and women, empty nesters, and retirees to join their structured and interactive volunteer program. If you want to learn more about this wonderful opportunity to make a real difference in a child's life, you can go to larabita.org or you can call 773 Eight, five. Brenda Wolf, I think you've been one of my favorite interviews all year long. Merry Christmas to you and to your staff and the Board of Trustees and to all the children and their families that are going to be at La Arbita during this holiday season. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me and uh, wishing Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2017 to, all you, to WVON and all your uh, listeners. Thank you so much.